This is uh, day four of Crowdsourcing We Global, Singapore 2015. Thanks for being with us. Uh, this is really exciting. Uh, we got a lot in store for you, but for some of you who haven't been for the past few days, we really learned a lot. We learned that the uh, one thing that is happening, and especially for the next three years, three, four years, that the uh, data mining science with algorithm and AI and artificial intelligence will be there, and we're going to see a lot of great things happening. Uh, but let's just start into the crowdfunding day, cryptocurrencies, what it is, what we're talking about here. So maybe you want to just uh, change the slides. But first, I want to go just uh, refer to this slide again. Um, I'm repeating this because crowd economy is about five Ps, okay? And the most important P is the people. So again, when we leave this room, we have to make sure that you know, people are being treated as people and not just as objects. And I think a lot, of the, a lot of the crowd companies out there, they are really realizing that you know, their main asset of whatever that they're doing, the technology or software they're running, is the people. And they have to be treated well. They have to really create mechanics, semantics, and everything else in their platform to really empower them. And so this is the key. Moving to the next. I haven't shared these slides um, to this, this week, but I thought I'll just bring this back since we always have a new, new people in, uh, at, at, our, at our global conference. Um, I want to just want you to think a little bit here uh, what has happened for the 25 years in the, um, in the uh, World Wide Web. Uh, and if we look at the 1991 uh, internet, it, it was more like the, uh, this internet of where people really uh, pretty much like didn't really know what, they, what it is. Um, and I think, you know, quickly the e-commerce took off. Uh, I think Sean Muffet uh, shared on Tuesday, he said that crowdsourcing is where e-commerce was in, uh, in, uh, in the early days and social media in the early days. This is where crowdsourcing is today. So if you really like you're, you're being here, you want to learn about the crowdfunding and, and crowd economy, this is the best time that you really get your hands and you get this experience. Anyway, if we move fast forward, 2000 and 1998, Google's uh, algorithms and everything has changed because of the crowd. Learning from people, how to bring this type of algorithm much better where you're connecting businesses for the people who are searching. 2001, Wikipedia, pretty much as we know it, is really powered by people and of course funded by people as well. Uh, we look forward to 2006, YouTube, uh, when it was acquired by um, Google uh, for $1.6 billion. Uh, back then, it was pretty much like there was no, they had no, no way that they really monetized their platform. So they were pretty much burning money, but they were acquired by Google for $1.6 billion. And then we take, we take 2008, where the social media started, but this is also where we're talking about 2008, where pretty much the uh, where we had this global recession, and this global recession, um, uh, crowd economy started taking taking into place because of a necessity, and so we have a lot of these crowdfunding platforms and crowd crowd economy platforms that started out of 2008, and of course, 2015 and forward, it's about the uh, managing the crowds. All right, so here's, here's the 14 parts that we introduced. Okay, so we talk about a lot about mass collaborations. Uh, also, change, please, the online communities, crowd tasks. Um, and we also covered, like, a sharing economy yesterday. Um, and, you know, all these 14 parts are part of the whole one big umbrella that, you know, it is about the sourcing of the crowds, what just Osama Manzar mentioned yesterday. Uh, but today, we're going to focus on the, uh, on, the, on the crowdfunding part and also the future of the money, the, these cryptocurrencies that we're seeing uh, popping up everywhere. What we're seeing here, we're seeing a really big change. We're seeing a big change because now people are really creating products from the bottom up, right? And the crowdfunding is fueling that. If you look at the... Uh, number of projects that's happening from the bottom up, it is amazing to see like millions and millions of dollars being really funded for these type of, for these type of projects. You know, I remember when a guy from, um, from uh, UK, when he went on a journey in, um, 
in uh, Taiwan and Japan, and he saw this cat cafe. And he said, I'm going to bring this cat cafe to London, but I'm afraid that no one is going to come to my cat cafe, so what do I do? And he started this crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo. So he raised over $110,000. So the question is, like, who are we to decide what works and what doesn't work? And this is what crowdfunding is about. So in the end of the day, OK, good. So what I want to bring, I want to bring this thing here is because you know, there's a lot of wealth in the world, and we still have a poverty. And I question that, why? Why do we have that? There's a reason for why we have that. Is it because of the greed? It is because of speculations? It's time where now people really have to really redefine the purpose of why we're living in this planet Earth. And this is so important to understand that crowd economy is about empowering people, not for the 1% really living a luxurious life, but the whole, as a her, earth, one earth, together. And this is so what really makes me drive this all over the world as a part of the mission that I'm behind it. Did you know about there's 10 billion dollars lose coins in the United States households alone. Can you imagine what this $10 billion can do to some countries? I mean, there are countries out there, they don't even have a $10 billion economy. So it's time to really like redefine the system and really think just like Reynaldo mentioned on, a, on, a, on a day two on Tuesday where he talked about it's about really rewriting the whole system. It's important. It's so important that we cannot continue this way anymore just by really going this business as usual, be part of the system where now it's only contributing to a very small group of people. So where is the future of money? Okay, is it in a paper? Is it on a metal? Or is it in your phone? Right? Do we know it? In Africa, they do it through text. So it's very important to really see where the things are here and where the things are heading. And today, we're going to learn a lot from a lot of people who really represent practitioners, not people who are just talkers, but people who are in this, in this space. Next. And this. I, I didn't make this. Yesterday, you guys, whoever was not here, missed this. Sean Moffitt, during our uh, collab session, he pulled out this. And I was like, wow, this is so amazing. But I believe that in the future, everyone will have their own coin. That's what I believe. I mean, we talk about reputation currencies and how important that is in the World Wide Web. You know, it's, it's, it, we are in a really most exciting times that humans have seen. And this is why we're here, and this is why we also hungry to learn more. Can we move next, please? And just like Jeremy Rifkin, he said, like, now millions of people are becoming bankers. I like to say, next, please, that... <laughs> In the next five years, billions of people are becoming bankers. This is the really big difference. And the big difference is that the next three years, we have another billion people coming to the World Wide Web, which pretty much they'll be totally synced in through the cloud and everything and all the systems that are existing. So the internet that I mentioned, the internet 1991, the internet of download that I call it, it's still among so many people of this 3 billion people of internet population that we have. Very few people are taking a big advantage of the internet of upload that I call it. So I'd like to leave you with this quote. So this is a revision of Jeremy Rifkin's quote. 